Would you like to have higher flights with your rockets? It all comes down to the fins, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this episode of the Rocketry Workshop. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I'm going to talk to you about sealing balsa wood fins. Um, now, why do we use balsa wood? Well, it has a lot of advantages. First, it's very lightweight. Second, you can sand it. Um, and the, the combination of these two allows you to make the rocket go higher. Um, and the other reasons is it's biodegradable um, and you, you can glue to it and paint it really easy. Um, those are all really good reasons to use balsa wood. Um, but we need to sand them to make them smooth so that the rocket goes higher. This is called friction drag. The smoother the surface, the higher the rocket will go. And it's also going to look great. So you're going to get a lot of comments from people on how good your rocket looks. Um, when we start out with balsa wood, it's in its raw state. And I see a lot of rockets on the field, particularly uh, younger kids, that will just paint the balsa wood when it's in its raw state. Um, and that's what this looks like here. And I painted it silver because if you paint anything silver, it's really going to show every flaw in your rocket. Um, so you can see how rough it looks. You can see the grain lines running through. Um, ideally, we want it to look a lot smoother like this fin right here. Uh, this fin, this rocket's been beat up a lot, um, so it's not as pristine looking as normal. Normally that I'd make them, uh, but um, you can see that it's much smoother by comparison than the, the raw balsa wood. So uh, this is the method that I like when I'm teaching kids because it's uh, non-toxic and water soluble. And the product I use is um, Elmer's. Carpenter's wood filler and it can come in a little tub like this and you can get them in bigger sizes a little tub like this is just a couple of dollars and it will last probably hundreds of rockets um, so a little bit will go a long way and as you can see it's a paste um, and we need to thin that out and we're going to brush that on the surface of the balsa wood uh, but before I do that I need to remove the balsa from the fin um, the fin sheet um, but before I do that, I like to sand it with uh, some fine grit sandpaper. This is about 220 grit sandpaper. I'll just lightly sand the, both sides. And this knocks off all the big uh, wood grain on the sheet. Now the uh, balsa, uh, the fins, are held in with these little tick marks. Um, and if you'll just cut through them, the balsa, it releases the balsa fin. Flip it over, you can see them that side too. Um, so you'll get like that. Um, now, another trick to make your rocket go higher is to round the edges of the fins. Now on this rocket right here, you can see it's got a square edge. Now I do that because I photograph them. When I photograph them, it looks better with a square edge. But when you want to fly them, you want a rounded edge. By rounding that edge, just rounding it over, you'll knock off probably um, about 60% of your drag. And I did a, 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 a newsletter article on this. If you go to the Apogee website and you go to the uh, Peak of Flight newsletters and look for issue number 442, it talks about the optimum shape of the fin, but I also talk about the rounding the edges of the fin, and better yet is to put an airfoil shape in. Now this shows a rounded edge, and this shows an airfoil. And on the airfoil, you can see it's rounded in front, but then it comes down to a point in the back, kind of like a elongated teardrop. That is even better. You can knock off maybe almost uh, 70 to 80 percent of the drag by doing that. So going from a square edge to a rounded edge, you got 60 percent, and then you get even more 70 to 80 percent of uh, drag reduction just by making that airfoil shape. Um, but in this video, I'm just going to show you a rounded edge because it's easy to do. So 
Um, what you do is you want to take your sandpaper, and I like to use a sanding tee or a sanding block so I have more control over it. I can do the, the whole edge at one time. And you just go around the edge just like that. You can see I'm rotating the sandpaper. You don't want to go in just one spot like that because then you're going to get a flat edge. You've got to rotate it. And you can see my fingers are underneath of it, and that supports it so it can't bend, because if you bend it, you're going to crack it, because the wood is going to naturally crack right along the wood grain. So I support it underneath, and then rotate around the edge. You can see I'm making a lot of dust, which is good. If you look at it from the edge, you can really see the rounded edge forming, and you've got to do both sides. Okay, so I got one edge done, and if you look at the edge right here, that's where you can really tell if you rounded properly, if you got an even um, symmetrical rounding. And you can notice I typically go in just one direction, that way I can be more uniform because if you start coming back and forth like this you're going to get a uh, one side is going to be um, have more pressure on it than the other side this way by uh, just going in one direction i can i can look at the edge to make sure that it's it's nice and uniform across okay I like it. So next I'm going to take the wood filler and I'm going to put it into a little bowl and I'm just going to scoop some out. Make sure you put the cover on really good and tight because it will dry out on you. Um, and I got a little bit of water right here and I'm just going to add a few drops of water. I want it to make it to Right now it's kind of like toothpaste, but I want it to be kind of watery toothpaste. This is water soluble, so you don't have to worry about getting it on your hands. You just when you when you're done, just wash your hands off with soap and water and it comes right off. It's pretty benign stuff, which is why I like it for kids. It doesn't have any odor odor, so it's not gonna stink up your room or anything like that. And it dries fast because it's just water. So how long does this dry? Well, how long will water dry? Um, you can put a fan on it, you can get a hair dryer, you can speed up the uh, evaporation of the water. Um, so it can go pretty quick. You know, you could, you could have your fins done in 20 minutes if you, you know, use a, um, a fan or a blow dryer. Um, next, I'm gonna take a paintbrush, and I, I, typically I like a wider paintbrush than this, but this is all I had. Um, and I like to do both sides of the fin at the same time. Because it's water, you're putting water on wood, wood tends to warp when it gets wet. So if you put water on both sides at the same time, then it will um, stay fairly flat, and that's what you want. Um, so to hold the fin while I'm doing it, I just got a needle, or uh, this is a piece of music wire, and I'm gonna run it in through the, uh, the root edge now notice the grain direction right here. It's not going straight out like this, it's at an angle. And that's the direction that you gotta push in the pin. Um, and you gotta be careful that you don't push it in so that it comes out the side. You know, if you, if you angle it up, it's gonna come through the top surface or angle it down, it's gonna go through the bottom surface. So this gives me a little bit of a, like a popsicle stick to hold it. Um, I'm gonna wear some gloves here. You don't have to, because like I said, this is water-soluble stuff. So it's just like getting water on your hands. Um, then you just dip your paintbrush in it, and you slop it on there. Um, I, my uh, Typically, I like to put it on really thick, because um, that way I'm assured of covering the whole fin. And I like to work it into the wood grain, too, so kind of back and forth. Make sure you're getting into all the little nooks and crannies 
in the wood grain. Don't forget that uh, tip edge. Now the, the root edge, the part that gets glued to the fin, you don't have to do that. Um, you want the glue to touch the actual wood fibers as much as possible. You can see I'm just slopping it on. Just like that. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Okay, and then you can clean off your brush, just run it under some clean tap water and that'll be fine. Now, um, I find that uh, using a, a wood uh, corrugated box, you know, it has these nice little um, flutes in it. You can just stick it in there and that way it's freestanding. Air can get to both sides. You can put a fan on it to blow it dry. Um, so then it will dry. And when it dries, it will look like this. This is one that I did a little bit earlier. Um, and it's hard and crusty. Um, so our next thing is to start sanding it. Um, again, I'm gonna use uh, like 220 grit sandpaper. Um, and one of the things you're gonna notice is this is gonna sand a lot like the balsa wood. So you gotta um, use fairly light pressure because it's gonna go really quick. You can see, already see, I'm making a lot of dust on the table. Again, you gotta round that edge. You gotta make sure you get that edge. Remember to do both sides. This kit that I'm working on uh, that you saw here at the beginning is called the Avion. It's one of our beginner kits, beginner level kits. So it's really good for uh, kids that are in school, um, fifth grade, sixth grade up. Um, if you're gonna be um, working with younger kids, I would suggest a rocket with through the wall fin tabs, kind of like uh, the Research Express that we sell here at Apogee. That's a little bit easier when you're actually gluing the fins on. Okay, you can see I made a lot of dust on the table. Um, let's see if you can see that. Now on this fin right here, I'm almost down to the wood grain right here and that's the condition that I want it in. Um, here in the middle, it's more of a solid color. Here I can see the wood grain a little bit. Uh, that's what I want to get down to because that will be the thinnest coat of uh, sealer and that's gonna give you the lightest weight fin. Again, the lighter the weight the rocket, the higher it's gonna go. Now if you go too deep and you're actually into the balsa wood again, then go back and paint on um, the wood filler again. Now this fin I uh, did earlier also. Uh, this one is complete and um, you can see that it's really smooth and you can take your finger on it and you can feel how smooth it is. I wish you could do that, but you're on the other side of the camera. <laughs> Um, but trust me, it's really smooth and it's, uh, when, you, when you paint it, it's going to look great. Um, so that is how to seal a balsa wood fin. My name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. Over here on the side, we've got some other videos that I think you'll like. Um, down there, uh, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Um, also leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you say. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.